Hi everyone, Jared from Barbecue Spit Rotisseries here. Welcome to our video about how to cook a whole lamb on a spit. So we're going to need a few things for this particular cook. Uh, we've obviously got our whole lamb. Now this is a 13 and a half kilo lamb. We're going to put it on one of the flaming coals spits. So I'll take you through some of the accessories that we're going to need. So these are two spike prongs. So they just essentially go at the front and the back shoulders of the animal to hold it into place. We've got the two leg brackets. They hold the legs into place so that the legs aren't flopping around during the cook. And you'll need at least one back brace. So this is a deluxe back brace from Flaming Coals. So if you've got an animal where the spine raises up quite high over the top of the skewer, this just gives you that extra space. So the spine's going to come through just like so, and then this plate is going to brace that spine into place. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this animal prepped. Uh, we're going to give it a wash down to make sure it's ready to go, and then I'll take you through the marinade. So folks, what we've done is we've just taken the animal out, we've washed it all down, we've rubbed it all down, just to make sure that we get off any dirt, grime, hair, things that we don't really want on the animal. So we've done the outside, we've done the inside. So we've got a mixture of dry ingredients here. We've got some oregano, some cumin, uh, we've got salt, we've got some black pepper. We've got a bit of a mix of things. We're gonna rub that on the outside of the animal. Uh, we're also gonna do the inside of the animal and then we're gonna to move to some of our wetter ingredients like our onion, garlic, etc. So let's start with the salt. So we're just gonna do this really liberally, making sure we get around the whole animal. Remembering to do the inside as well as the outside. Okay, so that's our salt. Next up, we'll do our pepper. Next up, we've got some cumin. And lastly, we're just gonna sprinkle it with some oregano on the inside and outside as well. When marinating the meat, I like to prepare in a big tray. What'll happen is as you're marinating it, all that salt and pepper and all the things that you're using to marinate it will fall into the tray. And then you can just scoop them up at the end and use the rest of them. Uh, just adds that bit more flavor and there's no wastage as well. So now that we've rubbed our dry ingredients, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we've got some onion and some garlic here just squashed up. So we're gonna put that on the inside. We're gonna sew, we're actually gonna sew this animal up. So as it's turning, that onion, that garlic is just going to rotate inside. Uh, it's going to break up and it's really going to infuse the meat with those flavours. So we'll chuck those in. And we've also got some rosemary here as well, so we'll pop that in. That's going to break up throughout the cook as well. Ideally you'd marinate this overnight, really infuse those flavours. Uh, but if you're time poor, this will still work out no problems. Uh, what a lot of people like to do as well is if the meat's a little bit dry as before you're putting your rubs on, even just use a little bit of olive oil, and it'll just help it all stick. Now a common mistake that people can make when they're preparing a whole animal on the spit is actually stitching the torso up before they put the back brace in and get the accessories on. Now it's no point stitching up the animal and then trying to put the back brace in, it's not going to work. So you just need to make sure that you think ahead. We're going to put the skewer through, the back brace in, and then we're going to get the other accessories on, get our meat perfectly mounted, and then we can stitch up the torso, ready to whack on the spit. So the back brace that we're using today has a hole for the skewer to pass through. So by allowing the skewer to pass through this hole, it gives the back brace that little bit of extra room to make sure that it gets through the meat so that we can secure it tightly to the skewer. So we're going to push this back brace through. Just keep your hands clear. And there we go. So we're just going to keep that loose just for the moment so that we can get the skewer through, get all our other accessories in place and then we'll tighten it and we'll put the plate on the top. So we've got our back brace pushed through. You can see just these spikes coming out the bottom here, which will be the top eventually. Um, I've just fed my skewer through the front and the back of the animal. So next we're gonna grab the plate for the back brace. We're gonna place it on each of the screws here and then tighten that into place with each of these wing nuts. Now it's important not to do it too tightly because as the animal's cooking, it'll weaken the spine and it can snap the spine uh, and then you're in a bit of bother when you're cooking. So just make sure that it's tight, but not too tight. Our back brace is tight and it's in place. Now before we do anything else, we're gonna make sure that our meat is centered. So it's in the center of the skewer, so it's balanced each way. We recommend stainless steel wire when stitching up the torso of the animal. The reason being it's strong, it's got a good heat resistance and it's sharp at each end, which means that you can easily thread it through the animal uh, to get it all stitched up nice and easy. 
Now when working with stainless steel wire, it's very important to understand that it can flick up, so be careful of your eyes. And because you're working with sharp ends, just make sure that you're watching out for your fingers as you're threading it through the meat. So to stitch up our animal, we're going to start from the back. We're going to work our way up through to the top here. If we find that we've got a little bit of extra stainless steel wire, we can bring it back. Or if we're happy with how tight the, the, the stitching is, we can cut it and then we can use that elsewhere in the cook if we need it. So it's very important to know that as you're stitching up the animal, get it in some really nice meaty parts. Um, don't come too close to the edge because if the stitch happens to break, then the animal could open up and you're going to lose all of those wonderful juices and everything that have been created inside. Alright, so let's get started. We'll start at the back here, nice and close to where the, the beginning of that cavity is. Now give yourself a little bit of wire to play with at the start because that's going to just help tie it up. So we're just going to wrap this around a couple of times just to make sure it's nice and tight. And once we've got that first stitch into place, then we can run that whole way through and get it ready to go. You'll see now that I've stitched up the torso of the animal here, so I've just ran it up from the back to the front and then cross stitched it back, tied it off, and we're ready to start putting the additional accessories on to secure the meat from the front and back and to secure the legs in place. So we've got the animal skewered, we've got the back brace in place and we've got the torso stitched up. Next we're going to bring the prongs, so the large prongs from the front and the rear of the animal. The tip with the front and the rear of the animal is just to avoid the bone when you're trying to put those prongs in. So we've just put the front prong in, we've got that nice and, nice and tight there. Now the back prong we're just going to push in, we're just going to push it through as hard as we can until we've got that meat secure. So what you'll be able to see here then is we've got the prongs in the back of the animal, so they're secured in there, so that we just avoided the bone on that side, made, it short, made sure that it was nice and tight. We've done the same on the front. Next, we've got to put the leg brackets on. Now with these leg brackets, they're just going to slide onto the skewer like so, and the legs are just going to sit into these little grooves here. Now, a lot of the older style leg brackets were a bar with two U-bolts, and then you screw those in. But we found that those are a bit clunky, a bit time intensive, the way that the muscles contract and the way that they, they sit at a certain angle means that they're not going to fall out of these grooves during a cook. So we just make sure that they're just facing up like so and then we're just going to hook the legs on each side and then they're going to be held into place there. So as you can see, they're already nice and tight. They're not going to come out of there. We'll do the same for the back. So we've got our leg bracket attached on the back, our leg bracket attached on the front. We've got our two prongs, one on each end of the animal, all set up, and we've got our back brace nice and tight. So to help with balancing the meat, what we're going to do, is we're just going to tie off the neck here to the top of this leg bracket, just with some stainless steel wire. So we're just going to tighten that up, and that's going to hold it into place, and it's just going to help balance our meat through the cook. Now, for those of you that won't have a setup like we've got here to ensure that our meat's balanced, you can do this on the spit that you own. Uh, just need to make sure that you do it before you have your coals inside the spit and cooking. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to spin this meat around and we're going to discover if there is a heavy part of the meat, which is generally the torso. So we're going to have to counteract that weight with one of our counterbalances here. So this is a counterbalance weight. Now the way it works is the further that this weight is out from the centre which is attached to the skewer, the more weight it's actually going to counteract. So it's quite versatile, it's adjustable two ways. So the way that we test the weight of the meat to see if we need to counterweight it, is we spin it around until we discover that there's a, a heavy point where the, where the meat will actually drop down a lot quicker. So if we're just smoothing it around, we'll find that just there there's a little bit of a drop it's not too much, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to count. We're going to show you how to put our counterbalance weight on anyway. We're going to let that rest at its heaviest point, and then we're going to put the counterbalance weight on the skewer and point it in the opposite direction to that weight. And then we're going to test it to see if that's a, now a smooth turn. We're going to slide the counterbalance weight on the end, face it up straight away from the heaviest end because that's sitting at its heaviest point now. And then we're going to tighten this. And then from there we're just going to make small adjustments with the counterweight up and down 
uh, the upright screw here just to make sure that it's completely in balance. So again, we turn the meat. As you can see, that's quite heavy there. So we need to bring that counterweight back in towards the skewer. So it's not counteracting as much weight. So as we turn this, we can see that it's a nice smooth turn now. I'm really happy with that. We're just gonna make sure it's nice and tight and then we're away. We can put this on the spit and get cooking. So folks, here we are. We're ready to put the skewer over the top of our coals here. Uh, in this particular cook, we've used Valley Root charcoal, uh, but there are different types of charcoal available on the market. Uh, they're all a little bit different. We find Valley Root charcoal quite versatile though. We've used about five kilos to start with. That's giving us some good heat. I can really feel that off there now. Now it's very essential that you wear gloves around your spit, folks, because uh, I'm standing quite close to the spit here. I'm feeling a lot of heat. It just gives you the ability to not burn your hand and your arms. Uh, these are quite long length. So very, very uh, convenient to have around. Very, very safe. So this is the part where you're gonna need to grab a friend, grab a partner, grab one end of the skewer each, put it on the spit, and away we go. So there we have it folks. That's how you put a lamp on a spit. Uh, this one here was a 13 and a half kilo lamb. Uh, we've got the front prongs, so the two spike prongs at the front and back of the animal, uh, making sure to avoid those bones. We've got the leg brackets, so they'll hold the legs in place. We've got the back brace, uh, so remember that's going to hold the spine in place so that the animal's not going to shift side to side during the cook. We've also whacked the counterbalance weight on there as well. Uh, that's just going to help counteract any uh, lopsided parts of the meat. As you can see, this one's turning really, really well. There's no dipping, there's no strain on the motor. Um, so it's going to give us a really even cook throughout the time. We're cooking this whole lamb on the Flaming Coals Spartan Spit. So it's a 1200 spit. Gives you about a 1.1 meters of cooking space. Which, as you can see, is perfect for this size lamb here. Now we're going to put this on for about four hours. We're going to check the charcoal every half an hour to an hour just to make sure that our heat's okay. Now we should be able to put our hand just underneath the meat for about five or six seconds and that means that our heat is really good out of our charcoal. If you're finding that you can leave your hand there a bit too long, the Flaming Coal Spits are fantastic because they've got quick release mechanisms on each side here. So you just quickly undo the screw, drop it down to the height that you need and tighten the screws back up. Now it's best to do that one side at a time or have one person at each side do it. So folks, don't forget that the Flaming Coals range of spits and all the accessories can be found here at Barbecue Spit Rotisseries. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to head over to our website for lots of handy tips and if you want to purchase any of these accessories or spits that you've seen today. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.